I am telling you, for God to revisit something of 2009, God has a plan. Let me just try to paraphrase. I, did, I shared in details what was happening from the year 2009 and the fact that uh, I had to go to Central Province. God had to send me there. And recently, because of many tons of events, the Lord again reminds me, and there is a prophetic action which was dropped in my spirit. It's because it is also a bit urgent. Praise the Lord. You need to understand that this battle is severe because we are also dealing with principalities that have said the area is theirs or the area belongs to them. You remember I told you when the Lord spoke to me and sent me to the central province at night, one of the principality that came when I was just after I had already decided to go. One of the principalities that came was a huge gingatic, female-like. But this gingatic being appears to me in the night. It was so huge, its head was in the air. I was looking at it from up, and it was so real. And this thing comes into my room at night and, and uh, tells me that you want to go to Central Province? To deliver the message of the Lord. You know, it's like a mockery kind of, hmm. I was shocked. I didn't answer. I never encountered such a gingatic being. And something with the head in the air. And it is female-like. I looked at this thing and I was just staring. And the thing said, anybody. Now, you know, it went on talking and said, anybody who tries to bring a message to Central Province, and especially to Nyeri, pointed down. So I wondered, what is down there? So I looked. A man lying at her feet. Let me call it her now, because it's in a, a female form. Are you getting? Lying at her feet. He had a black suit, even a tie was on, but he was dead. Are we together? This thing, I think, really also hates men. This principality. I gathered that it also oppresses men. Pointed. So I looked at the man and I said, what? It's like, I, she did it. that thing didn't speak much. The only thing it did is showed me how, what it will do to anyone who tries to come to Central Pro to bring the message of the Lord, Lord. Dear brethren, this is a, a, a spirit that has felt like nothing can move me. It has felt so comfortable. It has felt like it has enough kind of covenants and uh, legal grounds. But let me tell you, the devil is a liar to see this way. The devil is always like a lion, but he's not the lion. He looks like a lion. Okay? But he's not the real lion. To the real lion. Yeye ni kwa kutisha tisha. Sisi tumesema tutatishwa. Provided our God is on his throne. Provided he has given us authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. Provided we don't come in our name, but we come in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Since what we know is the center of Kenya belongs to Jesus Christ. Mambo mengine yote ni wongo. Hallelujah. Hawa wengine wote ni bandia. They are squatters. Easy, my paper, your ten is quarters. Isn't it the Bible which has said the heavens, even the highest heavens in Zamungu? Bwana Yesu wa Sifiwe. Bwana Yesu wa Sifiwe. Na pia Bibile inasema ya kwamba, the earth and the fullness thereof is for who? The earth and the fullness thereof belongs to who? That's what the Bible says. And it is the truth. 
And the people belong to God. Yes. So we are not apologetic. This is a great sign that something is already happening. Yes. Things are happening. And there is a reason as to why we are, we are gathering even today. In 209, as I had mentioned to you, there are things that happen. God spoke to me after I came from a mission to Marsabit. And when he spoke, he told me that I need to take a message to Central Kenya and particularly to Nyeri because Nyeri is the headquarter at that moment and I think still is. So, and he told me the reasons. As I shared with you last time, I got shocked by that kind of a message because why? I'm not from Central Kenya. Secondly, I knew I'm a missionary to the northern parts, so I didn't have much understanding on prophetic matters and that God uh, would send me anywhere. Probably I didn't understand the calling and the vision very well. So it was uncomfortable for me because I was wondering how would I come from a mission to Marsabit back to Nairobi and the next thing I hear from the Lord is I'm supposed to take a message to central Kenya and I wondered who do I know there? What, what is the interest there? I mean, of all the people, why would God send me? So I had these questions and so uh, I developed a bit of uh, reluctance and uh, trying to understand and also uh, doubts in a, in a way. Saying that, do I still hear from God? In fact, I started asking myself, am I getting confused or do I still hear from God or what is going on with my life? So at that, I decided I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not sharing this. I'm not even putting it, uh, asking people to put it in prayer. So let me just leave it. So it's when, in that season, as I told you, Pastor Grace Mugani, who went with, me, with the Lord recently, she had a church in uh, Westlands, invited me and asked me to minister on her behalf on a Sunday because she was not going to be in church that Sunday. So it was... That because she's a friend and I had ministered there before, so there was nothing difficult. She said, you'll be met by my uh, assistant pastor and the wife is also there. So I go to minister at Grace Express. I preach the gospel. After the word, I started asking people, let's stand up and pray concerning the word. As we prayed, I finished praying and me, I was through with prayer. When I finished immediately, I had just walked off the pulpit. The assistant pastor's wife comes to me and um, she tells me, do you know what? I said, what is it? She said, when you are, you are praying in tongues, you are speaking kikuyu. I said, you can't be serious, honestly. If it is speaking kikuyu, I would have known at least some aterere, yeah, yeah. Oroaku or something, you know. Those are very basic. But she said you spoke Kikuyu. And she said because I know that you do not know Kikuyu. I got interested. I stopped and listened. But she said the rest went on praying because half of, I think more than half of the church were Kikuyus. So half of the, uh, more than half of the church were praying seriously. She said people even thought you are giving them a prayer point, and then they continued praying, but me, I decided to listen to you. I said, what? She said, yes, you spoke Kikuyu. I said, what did I say? Hey, what shocked me most is when she said, you are telling people how God has sent you to Central Kenya and to Nyeri in particular. I'm like, what? My knees felt weak. I said, what? I've never seen God deal with me like that. And then I knew I had not shared with any human being. So I knew there is no way she can cook this. 
So she went on and she told me, you, you, she told me uh, how I spoke about um, Rachel uh, crying for her son. She gave me the scripture in Matthew 2, 2 and she told me how uh, I, I kept telling people the message that the sons are no more and people need to start wailing and crying for the sons of the central. She told me you even quoted the scripture. I said in Kikuyu. She said yes. Dear brethren. Hallelujah. For me, I knew God was setting me up. You know why? He knew I, I, honestly I was already, I had already put that mission off. Sorry, I'm not arrogant. But if I don't understand something from the Lord, me, I don't like in getting involved. Hello? Who, you, who told you warfare are easy going things? Hello? Who told you to take up a battle is an easy thing? Who told you to take a message somewhere is an easy thing? You don't only take up you are given more instructions and you keep doing it. I'm not complaining at all. I thank God I said yes to God many years ago. I had even to leave my job at Nairobi Hospital. Just because God told me you have more responsibilities. Leave this place. And now, come out. So I'm not trying to be, I wasn't trying to be disobedient in any way. But I wasn't sure of this thing. But that was a serious setup. Dear brethren, I felt my knees were giving in. The more she spoke, I told her, can we go to the office? She, we went to the office. And she asked me, what are you going to do now? I told her, do I have a choice, even you, the way you see? I must go. Hallelujah. And she said, I come from Nyeri. I'm going to pray about this thing more seriously than everybody. I had to go, we went. The first meeting, as I told you, was not, uh, we managed to get the intercessors. They came, and the intercessors, uh, God already warned me, so my heart was ready. Have you ever been warned? God warned me and told me that uh, there is so much complacency. The people of Central until the son is their own, or their cousin, or maybe it's just in their house. Uh, they don't budge much. They don't take the burden so much. Uh, it has to be maybe someone connected to them. It didn't mean all the people, but God needed a high level of prayer at that time. And also he spoke about the fact that uh, a few things here and there. And he told me, pray before you go. Ask people to pray for you. In fact, in the vision I had with this Gingatic being, immediately in the same vision I had the Holy Spirit tell me, uh, ask intercessors to pray for you as you embark on this mission. Because this Gingatic being came when I had already decided and we were already planning to leave. It's when it came. So the battle for Central has not been easy. God said, go and tell them to prepare themselves because it is my time of visitation. Why I had to go is because when people miss their time of visitation, they go into judgment. Jesus said, oh, if only you knew your time of, of, of visitation, yeah, you would have been delivered. But now you'll go into judgment. He was crying over Jerusalem for that reason. Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem. If you knew your time of visitation. So me, I knew I needed to take the message. I knew that the people of Central Province needed to prepare for the visitation of God at that time. And secondly, God doesn't usually visit. There is a way prepared. That's why John the Baptist came. He said he's the voice in the wilderness saying prepare the way for the coming king. There's always a preparation. He said repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Make his path straight. Prepare the way for the, for the coming king. That's what John the Baptist. That was the mission of John the Baptist. All he said is prepare the way. He said every valley shall be filled up. And every mountain shall be brought low. Prepare the way for the coming king. That was the mission 
of John the Baptist. So, there is always a preparation needed. So that's why God said, tell them it's my time of visitation. And yes, of course, also the central has had a, a special place for, in God. Why it is so significant to this nation? Because it is one uh, community that, uh, among other communities, that embraced Christianity much more in Kenya. So much was released to the central in terms of spiritual investment. Everybody who invests somewhere requires also returns. Hello? And the Lord quickened me that uh, now it's not missionaries coming from elsewhere. Yeah? The central has a lot to give to the nation in terms of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a serious assignment. To whom much is given, much. Hallelujah. It is also so significant in terms of revival. That's what the Lord quickened me. That's why we are here. It is so vital to revival. So, and those sons that the Lord spoke to, to, to me and said, go and tell them to cry for their sons. As Rachel did. Because her sons were no more. He said soon or later, their sons will not be, no, they'll be already they are not more, uh, no more almost, but they will be no more. They'll be useless. They will be wasted. Because they are meant to be deliverers and spearhead a lot of revival. So go and tell them to cry for their sons. Because they are no more. And they will be no more. Let them do like Rachel. And deliver their sons because they have a serious assignment in the kingdom for the gospel, for the kingdom of God. But the devil, have you ever known that where there is a purpose of God, the devil also puts his foot very well? Are we together? And so the sons have been targeted. Targeted. God said, he would deliver these sons if the people of Central would cry like Rachel, who would not be comforted because her sons were no more. So, and my visitation, it says, would be there. So as a result of this, I had to go to the Central and to Nyeri Someone who does not even understand the language and the one, uh, only the one I was given as thanks. Thank God for that moment. But I pray that it just comes as thanks again. I don't, I'm not somebody who so much of languages. It's not so easy for me to learn a language, really. So it's my, still my prayer that God, if you brought it that time, see, you can even bring it. So I just speak it. See, it's possible with God. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, I go there. And I meet these intercessors. They came. Some are pastors, some are intercessors. There was a mixed group. And then uh, in the process, I start uh, speaking to them. We finished. But when I went back, God told me again, that meeting was not complete. It wasn't successful, as you think. Later on, he gave me another opportunity. And another opportunity. But what, what, why am I giving you all this history? It's because it has not been easy. The warfare has been there. Amen? The sons, I am told, their situation has been getting worse. Is that true? Yes. They have been sinking deeper. Some I hear are in alcohol den. Do you know if you don't follow God's instruction, you're wasting your time? Yes, I know that. 
And instructions of God, however little they look, however uh, uh, unintelligent they look. Let me tell you, if it is followed, a prophetic action, results are immediate. Didn't I tell you how God sent me when it was the worst of the times to Marsabit? Did I tell you? I Marsabit. When all the MPs died, peace could not come. People had divided markets. Hostility was on the highest. We don't have any MP because they all died trying to bring peace. After that, two or six, even an MP of Nakuru died in the process. In a plane crash. The place was hostile. We couldn't preach the gospel. You go for a mission, you are told the village you are going to is on fire. People are fighting, come back. We rush back to the town. You go to town. If you are Borana and enter a Gabra market, you are beaten seriously. You are told you have come to spy here. Markets have been divided. We have our own. You have your own. You are beaten. It was so bad. It was so hostile. Dear brethren, when God told me to go, gather intercessors from Nairobi, go with them. One of the questions I asked him is, I am working, Lord, at the hospital. We are busy. It's not my leave time. Can I call intercessors in Nairobi? That's the question I asked. We have people from there here in Nairobi. Can I just call and we do the three days here? Why should I? The Lord was silent. When he was silent, I knew. It's like, you know, it's like he was wondering. I have given you instruction. Whichever one you want to follow. So, I have to follow the one he said. Do you know I had to travel? Three days, dear brethren, we would enter a place like this. Some pastors joined, some other intercessors joined me. And the Lord told me I will do two major things. He told me one, Marsabit is shut like, like uh, Jericho. And the moment you people do those three days, I'll start, I'll open it up to the gospel. I'll remove this darkness. And uh, in fact, there are three things he said. Secondly, there will be peace supernaturally. Nobody needs to be sent there. Thirdly, he told me I'll put my mountain here. It means my altar. That's why even us, we have a place there. People pray. Praise the Those days, before two or six, dear brethren, we only had religious churches. Pentecostal, all this. No. Surely in the spirit realm, the land was cut off. It was totally like the devil had built his walls on it, like Jericho. Imagine the gospel has been in Kenya for all those years, and you can hardly find a Pentecostal church or a uh, more spiritual church in Marsabit. Before then, we went and, dear Lord, God is faithful. There are times you have prayer points, dear brethren. There are times you don't have prayer points. That meeting of ours, it was not a prayer point one. The three days. In fact, I asked the Lord, if it is Marsabit you are sending me and the problems we are seeing, we see the level of idolatry. We see the level of witchcraft. We see the level of tradition. We see the level of hostility in terms of cattle wrestling and, and people shedding blood. Lord, he are three days sufficient. I said, I thought you'd tell me things like a hundred day fasting. Actually, to be honest, I was doubting. Three days fasting and prayer? You want to remove all those problems? The religious mind was already kicking in. And it, me, according to my mind, uh, which has been in a lot of religion by then, I was thinking a hundred days would be sufficient. In fact, if the Lord told me a hundred, honestly, we would have done. I would have been more comfortable. I'm just being honest. Are we together? But he didn't say a hundred. He said three. I'm like three are so few. Are we together? But the Lord quiet 
both questions quiet. Why shouldn't we do it in Nairobi? Quiet. Three days are so few, quiet. So I said, yeah, God is saying we should go now. We should do whatever he says. Dear brethren, we would enter in the morning. Have you ever known what, what that's the time I knew what grace really is? Grace or prayer. We come. We start praying a bit. Already, of course, you can see we are already burdened. We were so disturbed by what is happening. You, do you know why the Lord sent me? He sent me because already he knew I had already conceived the burden. It's not everybody who takes a burden. I'm not bragging, dear brethren. You can choose to take a burden of the Lord or not. But for me, I would welcome it because I have seen what a burden of the Lord can do. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. It was not only Nehemiah who was in captivity. Do you understand? When he was told that the walls of Jerusalem were broken and the situation of the remnants was in a, they were in a terrible situation. Is it only Nehemiah who had this kind of a message? Even today, God always has a burden, always has a message, always has something touching. He's looking for someone who can be pregnant with a burden. But it is not everybody. The whole Jerusalem, the person who could not eat was Nehemiah. Suddenly, he couldn't eat. He was, we went into fasting without being told. Until he was risking his life. Because he was a cap bearer. And you cannot afford in those days to be sad in the presence of a king. They will kill you. They'll say you are plotting something. In the presence of the king, those days you have to be cheerful. The king had to ask him, why? What's wrong? And Nehemiah. And he says, it is the heaviness of my heart. You think it is everybody who can take a burden. But do God send burdens to everybody? He does. He always looks for a man. Looking is looking. How does God look for a man? He makes sure he hears a message. He or she hears a message. And then he checks whether they can take. Those who can't, he will still look. Isaiah was not even told anything. He overheard God speaking in heaven. He heard him saying, who will go for us? What, did, you, did you read the scripture in Isaiah chapter 6? He never said Isaiah should go for us. Isaiah only overheard a conversation. And he said, here I am. Kwani munatafuta mtu. He said, here I am. And God started using him. Nehemiah the same. Since God, I started learning about God's burden. Burden starts in the physical. It is you who allow yourself to take a burden of the Lord and God starts giving you instructions. God never allows people to hear a message. Eve is not hoping that they can take a burden. <laughs> Hello? You know we have so much power as Christians. We can choose because God has given us choices. The difference between us and, and other things is because God has given us a will. We can will to serve God or will not to. And we don't collapse and die immediately. Are, you, are we together? There is a choice. There is a will. That's why Jesus also had a choice. He said, take this cup from me. It is too hard. But not my will. Let yours be done. If Jesus feared the cross, dear brethren, it would have been done. Where would you get salvation? He was the lamb who was prepared before the creation of the earth. Who do you think would have died? And saved humanity? 
Some people think it was automatic. How can it be automatic for somebody to sweat blood? It was too painful. It was the hardest decision to make. Yet, he took the burden for the whole world. That's why he tells us, also you, when you want to follow me, take up your cross and follow me. People don't like the cross. We only like the goodies. Are we together? That's why we like meetings where we are only told how much many cars we can receive and all this. Why do you think it excites us? It also excites our flesh. Amen? So, what happened is that we would enter in the morning, as I told you. The Holy Spirit took over the three days. Dear brethren, I don't know. We wailed. People are under the tables. Some are under the chairs. Pastors are on their floors. And you know, men from those sides are not very humble. I don't know that you know that. Yeah? Some are Morans who became born again and became pastors. A Moran is a very proud person who only jumps and walks around. Dear brethren, I'm telling you, the Bible says that when my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, I will hear. I will forgive. I will heal their land. It's a reality. It's a reality. Hallelujah. After the three days, ah, uh, things happened. We came back. We came back. Let me tell you when God's instructions are followed. Maybe we were not even perfect, but somehow there was obedience. Are we together? What happened was, we come back, we hear, in a short while, is it about two weeks later, a lady, I think she's a Korean, but lives in America, I hear tells people that suddenly God has given her a burden to start a Bible school in a place called Marsabit. We've never heard even such a thing. There are no even spiritual churches, really. A school is called Ephatha. Then we were surprised. We said only after two weeks a message has come for a place. Then it was like as if many churches this side suddenly discovered that there is an area called Marsabit. Things happened until even us we started wondering. When God gives us instructions, sometimes we start to najijazia zile zingine, sindio? It must be followed. Of course, altars are there. But now, the most shocking was suddenly, communities started wondering why they were fighting. Do you know nobody brought peace to Marsavitz? Even those who are meant to bring peace have died. So who would have brought? Dear brethren, the, the, the markets were dissolved on their own. Communities became friends again. They went on intermarrying again. They wondered what brought peace, but they don't understand. They just discovered there was no hostility the way it was. You know why? It was spiritual. Life is spiritual. If you don't win, win in the spirit realm, you can't win in the physical. To see Jidanganyapa. Dear brethren, they started now doing things together until when, that was 206, when 207 came because of the way Mar Marsabit was volatile, the people, many people knew that what if there is violence elsewhere in Kenya, the place which is so used to violence, it will go on fire. Everybody expected Marsabit to be on fire. In fact, the people of, of, of Moyale were frustrated. In fact, we were given the information that they said they are frustrated. They are saying, what is wrong with Marsabit? 
We have tried to incite them to fight because we wait for them to fight so that we fight. But this time they have totally disappointed us. We don't know what has gone wrong with them. They are refusing to fight. Have you ever seen such kind of a frustration? People getting frustrated that these ones are not fighting because they are the ones who begin for them. Dear brethren, listen to me. They, they said they don't know what has caused the peace. But we know what caused the peace. There is a prince of peace who answers instantly. We started preaching. We put our centers there. Hallelujah. People started preaching freely. Churches started getting there. Hallelujah. And it has never of course, we've had a few things here and there erupting a few times. But it has never, never, never come near. These are isolated cases. Maybe once you could hear things. But let me tell you, the magnitude that was there has never, and I believe it will never, managed to come back to Marsabit again. Yes. Bwana Yesu asifiwe.